joining Geek Legacy on their E3 extravaganza. I am David. I am Justin. I'm Chung. And I'm Randy. And now you know all four of us, Murray guys. So uh, Chung, Randy, and Justin were lucky enough to uh, to spend the day on the uh, E3 floor. I unfortunately did not. So uh, what was some of the highlights for the day? Uh, the nice Hungarian lady. Oh, yeah? Yeah, she was my highlight. Was it the accent or was it? It was the accent. It was, it was straight up from like Transylvania. I honestly didn't know they were... They had accents until the blonde one, the one that got interviewed on camera, opened her mouth. The other one, I, I didn't detect an accent at all. Yeah, she was very nice. I like uh, the uh, party-based tactical RPG genre. Oh, okay. Yeah, and the uh, fantasy setting. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah? I, I don't know what she was saying. I couldn't understand her. I just wanted to hear her talk. We have now The Incredible Adventures of Van Helsing, which is an action RPG. And uh, it's uh, filled with monsters and magic and uh, weird science. It is set uh, in a Gothic Noir universe. What system was it on? It's, a, it's for PC. And the whole idea was uh, there's these crazy demons that even the vampires need help defeating. So the vampires seek out young Van Helsing to assist them in destroying and the, it's the So pre Hugh Jackman? No, right. it's um, Va the Van Helsing's son. Oh, yeah? Him and Kate Beckinsale had a kid? Maybe. Apparently, no. This is like Van Helsing of the of the ancient lore, rather than Van Helsing of the Hugh Jackman. So this so this is going to be Hugh Jackman free? <laughs> yes, no, he went out. Oh Jackman. man! But we are independent, so we are not uh, pushed by publishers. So uh, it will be released when it will be ready. ready. <laughs> but uh, that makes sense. And but you know uh, I, I think but the plan is queue for now. Yeah, and that's fine. I think as a gamer, we appreciate that. We would rather have. You know, a finished product versus yeah, something that not was uh, so buggy and right. uh, yeah, yeah, and unbalanced. I was all excited with Hungarian broads, and now there's no Hugh Jackman. You guys just but really they were very nice. We really liked them. Oh, and the cool. game looks fun. Oh, does it? Let's uh, let's move on to uh, some of the indie games. Right. Um, there was Haku. a soccer type game called Hokra. Hokra. Where it was. Um, it's like a stoner game. <laughs> Playing Hokra. Honestly, you could probably have a really good time if you were stoned or or pretty buzzed. Now, would you call it like the Craw? Let's go play some Craw, man. Let's get wasted and play the Craw. The craw. Extreme. Yeah, ex extreme. extreme. <laughs> craw was pretty much everything I could want from an Atari 2600 game 30 years later. And I felt like having just one of those old school black joysticks in my hand. And uh, you, that's all you needed. You just needed a D-pad and one button to play. Right, and this is like an, like an XBL, like an Xbox Live Arcade game, right? It's like a $10... Oh, I hope it's, it's not a $10 download. A, well, at this point... I, it's, I'd pay 99 cents for it or a couple yeah, bucks I don't, maybe. I don't think it's anything at this point. It's just an idea and yeah. a pitch to maybe make this game. Mm. To me, it doesn't seem like a standalone game, at least if, if it's just the one level that we were uh, shown in the demonstration. Uh, what it is basically is it's a rectangle that takes up your entire screen and all four corners are colored boxes and uh, What you have to do is you have to take the little black pixel That is the ball in the game and you have to take that and carry that into your colored square That it, that matches the color of your character and then it fills up like a little power meter kind of thing And then when it fills up all the way you win um, If they had different levels with the the colored boxes in different spots throughout the screen or obstacles walls You have to go around that kind of thing just to make it a little bit different I think that would make it a little bit more challenging and it would make, uh, you know, it, it would just enrich the game to the point where I think people would be willing to spend more than 99 cents for it. But as of right now, I, th I don't know, I think it's pretty cool. It, it's, I wouldn't say it's original because it looks like Pong, mm -hmm. but, you know, it, it is one step above that, so. Now, what would you pay to own Crop? I, I would pay a buck. I'd pay 99 cents. I'd play it on my iPhone or, you know, maybe I would, I would do a digital download for it and, and play it with an actual controller that has way more buttons than necessary. You, you seriously need a D-pad and one button to play this game. And three other people. And three other people. That's that's the unfortunate that's thing, too. That's another one. They need to... So I, got, so I have to have four buttons? <laughs> yeah. Four buttons and four joysticks. So here's the thing. You can play on, like, one Wii tablet <laughs> thing, right? Right. It's going to, like... Take a corner. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can have, you know, one controller in each hand and, and one on each foot, and you'll be able to, to play by yourself. You but, can solo this game. Yeah. It was definitely fun, and I could probably... Honestly, I don't know. I, I don't know what happened to me, but my attention span has just gone through the roof. <laughs> like, I, it's, it's literally, like, nanoseconds, like, in <laughs> basketball, and... 
the game was fun for five seconds, nice. but I got over it. What about some of the other indie games? Anything else that caught your eye, or was it all just kind of, eh? I mean, are you into indie games? Is it something that excites you because they're cheap and you can get them for like five bucks on Xbox Live? I do, I do like the fact that they do have that cheaper price point, and a lot of them, honestly, they're better than some of them. I shouldn't say a lot, but some of them are actually better than than games that get put out that that cost a lot of money to produce. Um, but it's it's really hit or miss. But just so. none of them that we saw today. Well, the ones that we saw today were still under development. I don't think any of them are available for sale yet, including our favorite Craw. But Craw, Craw, the and, Revenge. And of course, there's Joust. Yeah, you actually played that for quite a while. You yeah. were like an undefeated champion. Yeah, I told him to retire champion, but he wouldn't do it, and no, he was like and, the first one out. And then oh. the, the, the moment the moment I turned the camera over on him, he loses. I saw you got to go out like Jordan. You got to go out on top. Joust is basically you got the the PlayStation Move baton thing, and you basically are playing against your friends who also have the same baton. You basically just have to get them to jolt or move fast, so they um, activate their sensor to turn the um, the little glow thing red. <laughs> Where are you gonna find four people who have a PlayStation Move? Yeah. I know. Hey, Much could, less with yeah. enough room to be able to play that game. You had to have a lot of space. No, I mean, that'd to be a rad out. game to play, like outside. Yeah, outside. No, that game is a game where you basically, at the end of the day, you play it, you might kick your friend's butt. They were, yeah, like, they were like, there's going to be fights. They were playing in like a 12 by 12, like Thunderdome. Someone's going to end up with a move <laughs> controller at their butt. Yeah. And That's the, how it's going to end. Yeah, like the fat end of it, though. Yeah. <laughs> the glow, no, the, glow, the glowing, the glowing end. end. And then, yeah. and then they open <laughs> <up> their mouth. <laughs> And it's like that scene in Raiders. Yeah, totally. One of the the developers of the game was not a great PR person for the game because he was playing with this kid. This this one guy was playing, and he literally tried to pull him down by his um, his backpack. So I was like, dude, you're supposed to be representing your game and going, hey, this is how fun it is. Not, hey, I'm going to kill you because I'm going to win at this stupid thing. I bet everyone but that kid thought it was cool. Yeah, he, he wasn't impressed. It's like, I made this game. You're not taking me out, you little kid. Yeah. And I'm just sitting there, I'm standing there going, what's happening right now? So basically, you have a controller, and you just slap it at each other. Yeah, right? it's just, them to move. They're just bitch fighting. So, yeah. so it's like tickle fight. Slap and yeah. tickle. It, 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 should be called, it should be called slap fight. Cause it's <laughs> I like slap and tickle. Slap and tickle. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd look into a game like I mean, that. It's even fun when you're alone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So slap and cool. tickle, rub a pickle. <laughs> Exactly. Well, all you're doing is just running around slapping each other, trying trying to, to, to whack each other's balls, and that's really what it is. You make you're it just sound trying like to, a you... simulator for an alternative lifestyle. All right, uh, so was that uh, that was the that was your indie games? There was one more, and again, we don't, <laughs> don't know the name, but I don't even think it had a name. It was um, I'm sure I'm sure it no. did. you want you want facts. You go IGA. Was... You want you want top notch kind of. <laughs> we saw this thing one time at this one place. You come to Geek Legacy. Was, hey, no. hey, you ask IGN, they'll be like. You know, we didn't pay attention to those freaks. You know what's funny? I think I got a card. She was a student, and this was part of her thesis. She was making a game, and it it, it works around the, the Kinect, and it's a world builder, and you're basically like a butterfly or a unicorn or something, <laughs> and rainbows are... I mean, Chip made this, right? <laughs> I don't think he needed to start it out with this. Some girl made it. Dude. You got me at unicorns bet, and bet. butterflies. <laughs> nice lady made this. She's a student. I didn't ask where. You... So use your hands to select what type of terrain you want to build. So you can pick like a mountain or like the ocean or even both. And then you wave your hands to create the terrain. So you can, if you're just doing like uh, wax on wax off, you'll have flat surface. But then if you, if you go all crazy Kameha, Kamehameha, then you'll build like mountain ranges and stuff. I could see how it, for uh, a kid, it could be fun. Right. Is it like Minecraft? No, oh, okay. not at all. Yeah. It's 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 a it's a it's like a pony flying <laughs> making rainbow trails. It's like Nom Nom Cat, and, and exactly, and uh, it's Nam Cat basically. It's going forward, and you wave your hands to make mountains, desert, forest, whatever. Pick a terrain, you can make it with your hands, and that's all there is to it at this time. The greatest thing about this game was when I turn around and Randy was filming, and I see Justin swimming in the air. Just going with his hands. With, as with he's his doing lifeless pressure. look on my face. Like, <laughs> like what am I doing? I, I was so mesmerized shooting Justin <laughs> doing this that I completely didn't see Chung and his amazing winning streak at that Joust game. Uh, yeah, his alleged winning streak yeah. of three. Yeah. 